everyone. Did you know that jobs directly supported by the mobile ecosystem will grow by more than 2 million roles by 2020? Welcome to our completely connected world. God, this is supposed to advance. <laughs> In the next 30 minutes, what I hope to share with you is a little bit about what's changing in the world of work. And that will kind of help set the stage. No, nope, don't keep it dancing. <laughs> what's changing in the world of work? And how that will set the stage for why I think we need new capabilities in talent acquisition that literally shift the role of recruiter to become a global talent scout, convener, and coach. And that will set the stage for talking about some of the new, innovative ways you can enrich your supply of talent by connecting to the boundaries <coughs> and the connected world that we're living in today. So let's get started. I think everyone in this room can agree that there is a tremendous of change going on in your organizations. Most of that is being sparked by the exponential pattern of technology advancements as well as social shifts that we're seeing that really give rise to the power of people within organizations. We are living in a very connected world. Between mobile devices and internet access, people can do their work from anywhere in the world, which opens up your organizations for many world, for many jobs, into a global talent pool. And in this connected uh, world, where, uh, where we're powered by access to tons of data, companies will reach new levels of innovation where products are developed and released in very short cycles of time. One company that I think is really emblematic of this model is Mozilla. How many of you know about Mozilla? So Mozilla is a global community of technologists, thinkers, and builders who all come together to serve the company's mission to keep the internet alive and accessible to all. Yes, they have 10 offices globally, but a majority of their contributors are either employees who work remotely or they're one of the tens of thousands of individuals who volunteer their time to serve the company's mission. They're all connected via the internet, and they collaborate together to develop Mozilla's products, the Firefox web browser being the one that you're the most familiar with. And in this connected world, new technologies enable uh, global and real-time communication. And as a consequence of that communication style, now reputations are made or broken based on the real-time sharing of business behavior amongst all our stakeholder groups. And I think we've seen that Uber and United have kind of borne the brunt of that recently. Our global talent market is changing in terms of who our employees are, where they work, and what they expect from the workplace. Our organizations are now comprised of employees across at least four generations. And previous minority segments are soon becoming majorities within the organization. Longer lifespans mean that mature workers are able to stay in the workforce for longer. At the same time, millennials are becoming the majority of employees within your organization. And the one thing we know is that millennials want purpose and meaning in their work. So you're not just selling them on a job. You're selling them on what that company stands for and how they can have an impact. And our work is being distributed seamlessly around the globe in 24-7 operations being enabled by new corporate and social policies. So as a consequence of this very diverse talent market, your organizations need to seek out diverse pools of potential candidates in order to meet the organization's hiring needs. 
And we need new leadership styles and engagement approaches to deal with the different cultural preferences that people have in terms of uh, policies and practices and work design and pay, and especially in terms of benefits. In the past, our organizations have really sought a one-size-fits-all policy or practice to most of the things that we do. It was efficient, and we also thought that it was fair. But today, I would argue that we need more personalization in how we're approaching this talent because they have different needs and different desires. The democratization of work is shifting us away from organization hierarchies into more power-balanced organizations and communities that are less based on employment relationships and more based on projects. So individuals are choosing to work on project-based work rather than getting a job. They want to work more on their terms than on your employer's terms. So some of the consequences of this, this shift in power from being the employer, really, to being more balanced between the employee and the employer is that organizations are having, companies are having to use kind of diverse employment models about how they're going to source and engage with different talent that they're trying to get. And also, we're seeing, this is very interesting, a move away from hierarchy into more kind of networks of teams where people can be more directly connected to the, the work that they're doing so they understand how my project relates to kind of how I'm contributing and the impact that I can have. And the work that we do today is so complex that it requires collaboration across organizations to be successful. So I would argue that many companies can't really go it alone to develop their own products. I'll give you a few examples. What started off as a simple outsourcing deal between Bristol Myers Squibb and its drug uh, discovery process to a firm called Biocon in India has ultimately resulted in a very strategic partnership between these organizations where drugs are now developed, discovered and developed for global diseases collaboratively. Google has partnered with Fiat Chrysler to develop their driverless vehicle, and Ford has partnered with Lyft to provide them with driverless cars. Apple partners with a variety of different companies to give them chips and components for that iPhone that most of you have in your hot little hands. And we all know that Dell has Intel inside, and IBM will loan out their employees to a majority of their customers to make sure that the processes that they're putting in place continue to work as is expected. So a lot of cross-company collaboration. And all of this really sets the stage for why I would argue that the role of recruiter needs to evolve to become a global talent scout convener and coach. This role is comprised of five capabilities that I'll define for you. The first is talent scout, not surprisingly. If passive is the new active, then recruiters need to find new ways to connect with talent and to develop more long-term relationships. So similar to the way your company might court new customers, consider how a recruiter might engage in social media campaigns or contests or other marketing efforts to connect with people and let them know about the company and its culture. Some leading edge companies are creating social media campaigns around the ideal persona of an individual with really hot skills that they're trying to go after. And then they're connecting with those people and trying to get to know them, understand their capabilities, what their interests are so that they can lure them when the time is right. Community development. 
it used to be in the past that when a person left their company, they were kind of persona non grata, right? You know, a traitor, you've left the family. But today, organizations right and left are creating uh, alumni networks so that we can keep these people in the family. We can let them know what changes are going on, what new products are being developed, so that they might either refer their friends to the company or perhaps boomerang back themselves. Some organizations are also uh, investing in kind of micro learning opportunities around their products, around their company with their customers because of course your customers are all potential employees for the future. And as careers become more and more boundaryless today, I would argue that HR needs to develop skills in life coaching to help current and prospective employees understand the skills and experiences that they need to develop to achieve their ultimate career goals. And I argue, who better to do this than you guys who understand the important skills that it takes to get to the next job or to get to their ultimate career goal? You know, development isn't always about a course that you have to take within the company or another job within your organization. It might actually be an experience that I get with my kids' PTA, or coaching your kids' soccer league, or in uh, taking a leadership role in your professional association, or with a not-for-profit that you're really passionate about. There are a lot of ways that you can uh, develop. Now, traditionally, talent acquisition has focused on filling current open requisitions. And your procurement organization has focused on contracting with temporary talent. And I would argue that these two things are starting to merge as work becomes more fluid in organizations. And I think that for many of these short-term people that you're bringing in who are playing very strategic roles within your organization, having procurement being the face to that talent really sends the wrong message that you're just trying to hire them at the lowest cost possible or that they're an expendable resource. Recruiting can have a much better impact on integrating those people so that they get a running start within to the organization. And uh, recruiters are going to need to develop expertise in understanding all the different ways and all the different platforms that are out there and where you can go to get the right talent, whether that talent is temporary or permanent within your organization. And you're going to need the skills about how to contract with talent coming in from all these different venues. And finally, with the changing nature of the uh, work, the workforce, I would argue that uh, the global talent scout convener and coach needs to become a diversity and inclusion advocate within the organization. And that begins with understanding the impact of keywords on uh, potentially inhibiting individual women, people of color, or older workers from applying for your positions. So that's the global talent scout convener coach. I know that today many of you are struggling with how to fill a specific role within your organization. Not only do you have to find somebody who fits your culture, but you have to find somebody who hits all those exact specifications for that role that you're trying to fill. And that's hard. And what's really hard is that only a small fraction of the people who actually are qualified to fill that role will ever even see your job opening. And of those people, only a few of them will consider applying. And so the consequence is you have to screen through hundreds and sometimes thousands of resumes to find the perfect candidate. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired just thinking about that. As I argue, going alone really isn't the best approach anymore. But there's a new way to amplify your reach 
by thinking beyond the boundaries of your organization. And the great thing is this isn't just a benefit for you or your organization, but also for the candidates that apply to your job. They might not be the right fit for that job, but they might be a great fit for another job within your organization, or they might be a potential customer. So how you treat them matters. As a candidate, getting that thank you, but no thank you letter kind of leaves them feeling cold, if you even give them the honor of that response. But what if instead you can basically say to them, in your words, not mine, while you weren't a great fit for this role, we'd like to invite you into our shared talent platform while you will get considered for hundreds of other jobs that you didn't even know about. That would feel better, wouldn't it? Well, I'd like to introduce you to my new friend, Stella. Our truly connected world just got a lot more connected. Imagine your company having the reach and the sourcing power of over 100 other brands. And, you know, why not share your candidates with all these other companies? Because you don't know what you would get in return. Be it a brilliant candidate that actually fits one of your hard to fill positions or just a customer who's really happy with how you have treated them. That's how it is for uh, Dropbox. Dropbox is a cloud-based storage company based in San Francisco that joyfully <coughs> went IPO the other week. And when somebody applies for a job at Dropbox and they get rejected from that specific job, they then get invited to participate in their shared talent uh, system. And, um, and they do that via Stella AI. Stella acts, uh, Stella is a shared talent platform that acts like a bespoke recruiting agency. <clears throat> Members of the Stella network, who are generally Fortune 1000 organizations, they get access to not only the people who apply to their jobs, but also the almost 35 million other individuals who apply for jobs in the other 100 Stella customers. And those people have been rejected from the initial job that they applied for and they were invited into the shared talent platform. Now I have to tell you that those 35 million applicants represent 25% of all the knowledge workers in the United States. So Stella uses AI to match positions in the, uh, in the talent platform. And if a candidate matches to a job, they'll get a notification. And if they're interested in applying for the, if they're not interested in applying for that job, no harm, no foul, the company never even knows. Right? But if they are interested, and let's say your company has a couple additional screening questions, they get asked those, and assuming that that kind of goes off well, then, um, then their information would get transferred into your applicant tracking system. And the recruiter would get a short list of candidates that were all matched through the system and where the candidates have expressed interest in the role. But one of the things that I'm really the most excited about Stella is her ability, her, I'm her, uh, to increase the diversity of your workforce. Some organizations, some roles within an organization don't have a diverse talent pool because not a lot of diverse people are applying for those jobs or to those companies. But with Stella, you get your open positions in front of people in different industries and in different geographies, which open you up to a whole talent pool that you haven't seen before. And I think that's pretty cool. 
But let me tell you my second story, my last story. I said before that um, in today's complex world, companies need to collaborate to win in the marketplace. And I gave you several examples of that. Now I'd like to share a story about one company's particular struggle to fill a specific role. So Siemens makes a lot of different products. And one of the things that they make are hearing aids. <coughs> And Siemens decided that they would go ahead and make a hearing aid for children. But they had one problem. Although they had the technical talent that they needed to develop the hearing aid, they had no marketing talent that had the specific skill set to target this population. So while they knew that if they searched through their current employees, they'd find a lot of really brilliant marketing people, they also knew that nobody in that company would have the specific expertise about marketing to children and their families. It just wasn't an expertise that existed within that company because those weren't the kind of products that they sold. So they thought, well, maybe we should frame our problem differently. Maybe we should ask, who is the best marketer to children in the world? This is the audience participation time. <laughs> who is the best, huh? Disney. Disney, and Disney it is. And guess what? They already had a strategic partnership with Disney. You see, Siemens uh, talent, Siemens provided the engineering talent uh, to make the attractions at Disney's theme parks. Pretty cool. And as part of that alliance, Siemens got their medical products placed in some of the shows that Disney produced, like my favorite, Grey's Anatomy. Kind of cool. So as part of this partnership, uh, Siemens approached Disney and they said, um, we've got a problem. And they told them what their situation was. And Disney said, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, we'll just take a couple of our marketing people and we'll assign them to go work on your project. You heard me right. They just borrowed the talent from Disney to work on their project. And the solution that they came up with was absolutely brilliant. Don't market the hearing aid. Disney's marketing team came up with the idea to put the product in a very colorful box with a Mickey Mouse toy and a storybook that told inspiring stories about children with hearing aids. You see, Disney approached it not approached it as selling a toy, not a medical device. And as a consequence, children were very attracted to the toy, and the Disney hearing aid kit provided parents with the tools and information that they need to help their kids feel good, I might even argue cool, about wearing a hearing aid. Now sure, they could have, in, Siemens could have embarked on a very traditional search to find talent uh, that had expertise in marketing to children. But I think everybody in this room would realize that that would be a very challenging search for them because they wouldn't be the kind of company that that kind of talent would be attracted to because they don't normally sell products to children. So they could have searched for a long time and, and that wouldn't have uh, been very helpful, but if they by miracle had found a person, then, uh, then the person would have sat across from the hiring manager saying, cool job and everything like that, but uh, what happens after this project? And the hiring manager would kind of look back at them with a blank stare because there was no other project for this person. And I know what you guys are all thinking, which is, well, why don't you just hire somebody on demand? 
because this is a perfect situation to hire on-demand talent. And they could have done that, but I still argue it would have taken them a long time and it would have been very expensive. By leveraging their partnership with Disney, they found a win-win solution to this problem. Disney got marketing rights to the hearing aid kit because it included the Mickey Mouse toy and a storybook that was based on their characters. And Siemens was able to get their product to market quickly because they had the talent in hand and that talent knew the, uh, the marketing space. But best of all, the, project, the product was highly successful because of Disney's storytelling skills a skill set that Siemens wasn't even looking for. So by leveraging this unusual partnership, both companies succeeded by creating new opportunities where they could both succeed. By thinking beyond their own boundaries, Siemens was able to find a solution to a short-term problem. And I would argue that this mindset would really help them manage risk in the future because they never know where their products are going to come from or you know, kind of what solutions will be brought to them. And hiring a full-time employee isn't always the right solution for everything that we need to do. And in this case, they were able to look beyond the boundaries of their own organization and they ended up hiring the best talent in the world as a consequence. So here's my takeaway for you. Your talent pool is not confined to the people who apply for your positions. You need to think beyond your regular boundaries and think about how you might tap into your ecosystem of business partners either borrow talent or simply fish from a different pond. Thank you.